Horizons, Forbidden Tibet. Devil dancers at the world's largest monastery, where every turn of the wheel sends hundreds of prayers to Buddha. Lhasa's summer festival beneath the gold roof palace of the Dalai Lama, God King of Tibet. His palace, the Potala in Shangri-La. I adventure with Lowell Thomas. General Motors leads the way, starting with Delco batteries. Quality built by Delco Remy and distributed everywhere by United Motor Systems. This world of lofty mountains is dominated by a lofty religious mysticism. The creed of Buddha, whom the poet Sir Edwin Arnold called the light of Asia. monastery at the foot of a pass leaning over the world's loftiest mountains to a strange land on the Central Asian Plateau. We're at the edge of Central Asia on the Indian side of the Himalayas. These are Buddhist monks who like their brethren in hundreds of monasteries are praying for the deliverance of their spiritual leader the Dalai Lama who lives in a land that not long ago was overrun by the red tide by the Chinese communists who deny even the existence of a supreme being. The Tibetans, as you know, are an exceedingly religious people, also peace-loving, and they live in a country so strange that Westerners who visit it, very few ever have, they feel as though they have arrived on another planet. The pictures you are about to see were taken by the last two Westerners invited by the Dalai Lama to visit his Shangri-La, far off Lhasa, by Lowell Jr. and myself. 90% of them by the other Lowell. And if you would like to visit that strange land with us, come now as our caravan climbs the Himalayas. This land of the Lamas is almost entirely surrounded by parts of Asia that are themselves none too accessible. On the north and east, Xinjiang, Singhai, and Sikong, with their vast deserts and wild mountains. On the south, Assam, Bhutan, Sikkim, and Nepal, with Kashmir and Ladakh, Little Tibet, to the west. Within that ring, and still only partially explored, lies Inner Tibet, our destination. To get there, we must scale the Himalayas, greatest of all natural barriers. Not being nimble-footed yetis, abominable snowmen, instead of a frontal assault, we follow this narrow trail. On one side, the mountain wall. On the other, nothing, or so it appears. The start of a 24-day trek to Lhasa, only 300 miles, but every mile goes like this, for transportation here has no wheels. I wanted to bring a large expedition, including a professional camera crew. But the Tibetan government said no, only my son and I. So we did all the photography ourselves. Down this stony trail for countless centuries have come Tibetan caravans bound for India. Tibet Highway number one. First through
through a rainforest of bamboo and creepers for hours on end with some variety now and then, like going down this ladder, a Tibetan escalator. It's the monsoon season on this side of the range, 250 inches of rain a season. My mule, and fortunately she is sure-footed, insists on taking the outer edge, on the brink. Hey, look out, or we'll be the people of the abyss, while Lowell wisely walks. So we lose track of days, except that somehow I always seem to remember when it's Saturday. Whenever we pause, our porters fill their wooden bowls with barley flour, mixing it with water. Samba, they call it. The main diet in Tibet. Samba and yak buttered tea. As the days pass, we keep wondering, wondering why we've been permitted to enter Tibet, when nearly all others have been denied. Only a handful of Westerners over a period of centuries. The dark bungalow built by the Indians greets us each evening, at least up to the Tibet-India border. And every morning we're reminded why it takes so long to cover those 300 miles to Lhasa. Tibetan asses are temperamental. If their loads don't balance, they sit down. Loading up can take hours, especially when mule driver Ugin Tenzin gets temperamental and sits down too. Ugin Tenzin's boss is the Sirdar, our head bearer. And our interpreter, Suwong Namyal, who lives in India and speaks some English. Yes, loading the pack animals is a problem, but another even bigger problem has to do with smaller animals. Aren't your whiskers beginning to itch a little too, Lowell? What loads these porters carry? Up to 200 pounds, climbing at great altitudes for a daily wage of about 50 cents, but actually worth a lot more to them. Prayer flags mark our first lofty Himalayan pass, Natula, La meaning pass, at nearly 15,000 feet, separating India from Tibet. With every flutter, prayers written on those frayed rags are wafted to Buddha. Inside Tibet now, the trail dropping down to the wild river Amo. And a bridge that is, well, at least interesting. Hardly like the George Washington or the Golden Gate. But a bridge is a bridge, and either you cross it or you don't. We did. including ourselves, ever invited to Lhasa. U.S. Army officers on a secret mission in World War II. First Americans to witness the Tibetan New Year Festival, the only film ever made of that rare pageant. Reenactment of a legendary battle by soldiers in 16th century metal helmets and ancient coats of mail. antique matchlocks. Enter the jolly god of wealth, escorted to his seat of honor. An old man overpowered
power as a tiger, reenacting the dream of a late Dalai Lama, proving again the indomitable strength of humanity. Devil dancers representing evil forces. Eventually, the devils are subdued, and all evil spirits are forced into this cauldron of boiling oil for the villains the last cup of wine before a fiery death. Now it's safe for the cavalry to ride out of the holy city. Tibetan lancers, armed and clad in armor, just as they were hundreds of years ago. Knights of the Dalai Lama's Round Table. The final event of the New Year's Festival is slightly more up to date. A competition between cavalrymen at full gallop, aiming for a bullseye with bows and muskets. Now let's meet the Tibetan ruler's family, the Dalai Lama's mother, brothers and sisters. In the background, his fabulous winter palace. Brother Lobsang, the happy one. On the right, no relation. The Dalai Lama's mother has gold medallions on the back of her dress. How would you like these for Easter bonnet? A Lhasa woman burns incense and leaves prayer flags on a mountain top where we've come for a better view of the Dalai Lama's towering Lhasa Palace, the Popola. Built in the 17th century, entirely by hand, no steel, the Potala, a soaring mass of red and white masonry. Potala means palace of the gods, like an enchanted castle in the clouds, the real Shangri-La. <laughs> On its roof, gold crypts of departed Dalai Lama. Inside, more than 1,000 rooms. Just under the roof, the Dalai Lama's winter quarters. The penthouse of a god. A stone staircase on the southern face. Several years ago, an official guilty of treason was dragged by his heels down those stairs to his death. the valley, the medical college, where monks learn how to dispense herbs and how to blow horns made of human bone, horns to frighten away the evil spirits of disease. had ever been filmed. Also that he had met few visitors from the outside world. Spiritual lightning rods of gold on the temple roof. Green griffins in the courtyard. Ferocious masters. And the towering monk bodyguard that gives us a going over. On the roof, incense and thundering horns. Then into the temple, and there before us, the 
Dalai Lama, reincarnation of Chenrezig, the living Buddha of mercy. His Holiness steps into a shaft of sunlight with his Lord Chamberlain. At 15, he became absolute spiritual and temporal ruler of all Tibet, highest ranking Lama in the Buddhist world. Once again, His Holiness would pose for us, this time on an outdoor throne, surrounded by flowers and members of his household. In the Dalai Lama's lap is a plaque, a symbol of office, head of Lamaism. Of course, he can never marry. Every Dalai Lama, virtually a prisoner of his religion. Tibetans believe that when their ruler dies, then he is reincarnated somewhere else in Tibet, reincarnated in the body of a newborn boy. And they believe that they can find him. But this sometimes takes three or four years. He seems immensely curious about the travelers who have come so far to see him, the Tibetan living God of mercy. Standing alongside the 73-year-old regent, Tokra, who a few weeks after our departure turned all power over to the young Dalai Lama. short stay in Lhasa comes to an end. The number one high adventure of our lives. With deadlines to make back home, we shove off down the Kyuchu in our yak skin boats. Friends waving a final salute as we take our final look at Shangri-La. Traveling with the current this time, it takes just six hours to cover those 40 miles to the Sangpo, the Brahmaputra, in contrast to the two and a half days coming in. Later, crossing the river, our caravan animals have to swim. And are they frightened? Now we're approaching a 17,000 foot pass. One I'll long remember. Lowell, this is where the evil spirits caught up with me. Those mountain devils. Yes, here's where you lost that argument with your horse. We had been walking, and when remounting, nobody was holding his half-wild horse. It might have been like this, but instead the horse whirled, throwing him into the rocks where he broke his hip, smashed it in eight places. Hours later, Word reached our quarters who had taken a shortcut. Mm -hmm. 